Emily McNamara of Ivory Tower Cakes here in Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, a very wet Scotland today, I'm afraid. A bit dull and drizzly. Nothing unusual for Scotland. Um, so today I'm going to be doing my episode two of Petals and Sugar for Cake Flicks. And on this, I'm going to be showing you how to create some beautiful sugar poppies. So I've done them in stunning red, white and blue, just for a bit of contrast. The blue ones are actually, I don't think you can get blue ones, so I've used a little bit of artistic license with that one. It was rather nice. So we're going to get ahead and do them. So the first thing we're going to have to do is actually make our centre of our poppies. I have already made two in sugar and this is actually a real one here. I'm going to show you these. So this is the real one. I'm not going to um, replicate the stem because it's all hairy and, and it's a bit more complicated to do something like that. So I'm using today the Ultra Fine Flower Modelling Paste, which is by Simply Heaven Paste. And this is the one that I like, but where, wherever you are, you will find one that will suit you for your environment. This one for me is good because we often have a lot of humidity here because we get a lot of rain. My house is also... Um, is hollow underneath so we get a lot of cold coming up from underneath and so therefore the temperatures drop a lot from day and night so I have a problem with that so what I'm what I need is something that that really sets up in the humidity and I find that this one works for me we're going to start with some green um, green paste and I've actually colored this with a tiny little bit of fractal color grass green I'm going to take a small piece of this. What you need to do when you start with your paste is to really stretch it out, get that gum warmed up and working because that's what we need when we're working with flowers and um, no matter whether you, you're doing centres or whether you're doing the petals or the leaves, it still needs to be worked really well. This is for the centre of the poppy. So this is the size that we're using here. Okay. So roll it into a ball, no cracks. So once it's nice and warmed up, and then roll it into a slight cone shape. I'm going to be taking a 20 wire. I use these sunrise wires um, because the paper doesn't peel off them when you cut them. I'm going to put a ski pole in the end of it. This will give it a better grip. So I'm just taking the fine nose pliers and I'm just taking it slowly down around the wire and turning it a little bit at a time. Now if I just turned that over in one go, it would end up in a hook. I don't want a hook, I want a circle like this. And then I'm going to bend that back so that it's completely flat, like so. Okay. And then I'll take my pliers and I'll put them onto the first third of the wire and I'll bend that up. Now the reason I put it on a third is so that the wire stays in the middle. Because if we put it further in, it will go to the side. Now you can attach this with glue or you can attach it with heat. So I'm gonna heat my wire up. So you can use a, a little tea light candle or one of these little um, glow torches here. Pop it into your paste, squeeze it in, you'll get that puff of smoke, which means nice and ready to seal onto the sugar. Just pinch past that little ring of paste. You can pinch that off if you want to. If you want to get rid of it, it's up to you but you can easily bring your paste down round past it, get that nice and neat at the bottom, back into a sort of cone shape. And it actually looks quite like a wine glass shape. So once you've got the shape you want, take your Dresden tool, you keep it rounded at the top for the, the actual centre one with the, with the seed pod, we want it flat at the top, okay? So I'm taking my Dresden tool and I'm just taking it down all the way round, making grooves all the way around onto the paste. Then what I'm going to do is take my sharp end and just go in at the bottom of them and make them a bit more pronounced and the same at the top. So come back in and just make them slightly deeper at the top. Don't worry about going right into the centre because that's going to be covered up. So I've got some templates. I've actually drawn these onto a sheet with the poppy templates, the petal templates. Um, so you'll be able to download load them at Cakeflix or on my website www.ivytowercakes.com okay. So the next part we're going to do is the 
the top of the the poppy here. I'm using a, a little um, piping nozzle to cut it out, but you can use a cutter, whatever you want. So small piece of paste, roll it out and cut out a small circle. So have a look and see that it's going to fit on. Actually, that will be fine. Now if it's a bit sticky, corn flour is a bit sticky here today, it's sticking to my fingers. So I'm going to just take my tweezers and I'm going to go in, pinching lines all the way around into the centre. So just either side, come out, pinch, 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 pinch. But making sure that you're going round in a circular direction. So the lines need to be all pointing into the middle, okay? It's like, a, it's like a wheel, it's like spokes on a wheel, that's what it's like. So that's the shape that you want. Then we're going to go in between and pinch out. So in between those lines, just pinch out a little nick with the curved end of uh, um, some kind of cutter. I've used a little daisy one here. Oops pinch that on a bit much. Um, so I've, I've used a little daisy cutter here, but if you've got something else suitable, just use that. So once you've got that, just go back in and just neaten those up again and pinch them out more at the end. Okay. You see that? And it'll make it more defined. Like that. Okay. And that's the centre. So the next part we're going to do is colour up the centre part. So we're going to be using some moss green colour here, which is a sugar flare. So I'll show you that. I've used moss green, sugar flare, white, um, a little bit of lemon yellow and um, some black and some brown. Okay, so we're going to start, we'll colour this bit first um, with some brown in between. So in between the little spokes, we'll just pop in some brown in there. So it doesn't have to be too fussy because you're going to be putting black over the top anyway. So just get in there and get some colour on. Okay. Oops. There's a little bit of green shows through, so that's okay, that's the way it should be. Then we're going to take our black and we're going to go over the edges. So I'm using the side of my brush really to come over, but it doesn't matter if some black goes onto it because it's kind of a blacky brown colour. So don't worry too much about that. So then we're going to go in with some green. So I've used some moss green and white. And then I'm going to go over the whole thing with moss green and white. So I've mixed it just to get a nice pale colour here and I'm just going to go over the whole um, of the centre of the poppy with that. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a little bit of the moss green and yellow which I've mixed together here. And I'm just going to go over in different areas with that and brush it on the side and it'll pick out the raised veins. So you can use a little bit darker as well just to pick out some as well. So make sure you've got it on the side of your brush and then take the side of your brush like that and it will actually pick out those raised bits. And then just a tiny bit of brown at the bottom. Then we take our glue, a little bit of glue on the top and we take our centre, pop it on the top and this time, the centre part actually sticks down. So actually what we'll do is we'll put some glue on the back as well because we want that mostly to stick down. The one on the seed head doesn't stick down the same. So in the middle and then push it down. And that's our little centre of our poppy. So you do the same for the seed head except for with the seed head you actually leave it sticking out a little bit of the, of the, it's like a little cap sitting flat on the top and just make a little indentation in the middle as well. So making the same grooves around the side. And so that is the centre of the poppy.
We're going to cut to break now and when we come back we're going to start um, on the stamens and also the petals. So I'll see you in a minute. Hi everyone, my name's Anne-Marie McNamara of Ivory Child Cakes based in Edinburgh and Bonnie, Scotland. I'm a cake designer and sugar artist and my specialities are modelling and sugar flowers. I love demonstrating and teaching classes and workshops all over the world suitable for beginners to professionals, seeing the joy that creating brings, inspiring and helping to build confidence and skills. If you would like to learn more, please visit my website ivorytowercakes.com or check out what I'm up to on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest at Ivory Tower Cakes. You can also join me online in my live classes purchase my online video tutorials which will be available soon. Thank you for this opportunity Cake Flakes. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining me my name is Anne-Marie McNamara of Ivory Tower Cakes in Edinburgh in Scotland and we're going to move on to making the petals for our sugar poppy today. I'm going to use a um, cutter and a template. Now this is just a Jubilee Rose Cutter which I've actually just kind of manipulated a little bit to create this shape. You can just use it without pressing that shape out and I'll show you how to do that. And if you need to get the templates then I have done some templates for you which you will be able to download on Cakeflix or on my website www.ivytowercakes.com I have a veiner here which is, um, I think it's a diamond paste one, I'm not sure, but you can see all the veins on that. There's lots and lots of veins on this uh, veiner for a poppy. A poppy's got lots of fine veins on it, so I'm gonna show how to create that without the veiner, because the veiner's not very big, and my petals are bigger than that, so well, let's get going. So I'm going to be using a 20 wire, and I'm going to cut it at a 45 degree angle, and that will give me a nice point onto my wires for inserting into my paste. You can, um, Use different methods of applying your wire to your paste and uh, the one that I'm using is the board method but you may want to use the twiddle and stick, you want the fold over method or just the creating the ridge in the centre method. Okay, whatever you prefer. So I've got some red paste here. Now it's very pale, I've added some white to it so it was a pre-coloured red paste and I've added some white because I want to work with a base colour simply because this is going to be a nice strong red. So I'm creating a cone, pop it on my board and get it down and roll it. So what I'm wanting to do is keep it heavier in the centre, so not as thin in the centre and a bit thinner coming towards the edges. The reason I want it thicker in the centre is to make it a bit sturdier and stronger because it's only um, supported by the one wire and it is a bit petal. So just check. Now flip that over to make sure you get the central ridge going down. It's not quite big enough for me to get that central ridge down. So I'm just going to roll it out a bit thinner at the edges. Always important that otherwise your wire will be off centre. Okay. So I'm just going to go here and that's about centre. Grab your paste off. There we have our first petal. So pop it onto your sponge. And we're going to roll out that ridge at the top because we don't want that. And I'm just going to stretch it ever so slightly. This will be my, my inner petal which is slightly smaller than the outer petal. So I'm going to use a template for the outer petal. So I'm just giving it a bit of, um, now if you if you just want to use cutters and you've only got one size of cutter, then you can stretch this one to this size. Just keep going with your ball tool and gently stretching out, okay? So I'm going to take it around the edge and soften the edges half on and half off. I'm using a big ball tool because I don't want it really frilly. If you use a smaller one, you can use a slightly smaller one, but this is a really big one. But um, the smaller you, you use, the more frilly you'll get. So we don't want it frilly. We just, at the moment, we just want that edge softened so it looks nice and fine and gives an illusion of a nice fine flower. Okay, so onto the board. Make sure it's not sticking on your board. So pop a little bit of cornflower down and then we're going to grab our skewer. 
and we're going to take our skewer and we're going in a fan shaped direction fanning round and we're just rolling that backwards and forwards to create these little veins in the petal all the way around and I'm just taking it in but I'm not pressing right on that central vein because I want my um, I want that to be nice and sturdy for putting my wire in so just keep going round in a fan formation flip it over do the same on the other side you'll see that there's already some veining on there so that's great so this just gives it lots and lots of veining on there. Okay. So then we pop it onto our um, our pad, and we're going to pop in some deeper veins. So right in there, but make sure. So we're using the sharp end of the dressing tool. Make sure it doesn't cut through your paste and make a hole. So if you've left your paste a little bit thicker than you would if you were just doing a normal petal. So if you know if you were doing like a, a peony petal or a rose petal, do it slightly thicker than that. Because if you make it that thin, you won't have anywhere to go with these grooves so much. So flip it back over and do the other side. So put some more in there as well. Now these ones you'll see I'm not going right up to the top of these, I'm only going about halfway up, maybe slightly higher. Okay, so that's our pencil done and we're going to do put some crepiness into it now. So I'm going to use a smaller ball tool, you can use this size or this size and um, it will just give us some of that crepiness. So I'm just pulling my ball tool, now be careful that you don't make a real dent and make a, like a, a real groove in it. We just want to keep some, I'm kind of putting the same pressure all the way down. I'm not digging it in and stretching it. I'm kind of just stretching it along it. So rolling it across the top of it, stroking it. That's what I'm doing. Okay. And that just gives us a nice crepey, crepey looking petal. You can even use a smaller one, put in some bits as well. So that's both ends I've used now. And it just gives lots of nice movement and fluffiness about your petal. Then we're going to use the, the smaller end as well just to take it round and give us that top edge some nice movement. So you can either just do this with the, the um, ball tool, putting in this, this little frilled edge. It's up to you. So you can do it with the ball tool and leave it like that. Or you can go in with your Dresden tool again, it, sorry, your skewer again, over the top and just take it on, just the first couple of millimetres of the skewer and put a bit more frilled effect in there. It's up to you how frilly you want it, okay? So if you want it really frilly, just work on little bits at a time and backwards and forwards, okay? So once you've done that, we'll get our wire into our glue. Take any excess off on the back of your hand, pop it into your vein down the centre and about halfway up. Make sure it's pinched nicely at the bottom so that it's stuck on there. We don't want any mishaps, okay, of it coming off the wire. Then pop it onto your tin foil and use a spoon and just press in the centre of the wire to give it an indentation there. Okay, and if it comes through at the back, just pinch it back in with some tweezers like that. Smooth it down, back onto your tin foil. And what we want is a U shape here, okay? So just make sure that you keep that U shape of your, your petal. And then you can kind of squish in the top and the edge, whatever. So this is the internal petal, so make sure that you've got some bits coming round because it will kind of curve around like that. All right, so that's giving it lots of nice shape in there. So we want to make at least two of these. Now, some of the petals have got, um, some of the, sorry, the poppies have got, they've got between four and six petals on each. I've rolled out some paste already for the template. Cut around your template and do the exact same thing. If you were just using um, a rose cutter like that, then all you would do is you would push your paste up like that at the corners to create that indentation in the middle there.
going to create some creepiness in the petal again. So stroking this up and down, be careful you don't make any holes in your paste or any major, major kind of dents as such. So all right, these, these, these dents are quite good because that is actually, if you look at a, pe a poppy petal, they are, they do have a lot of kind of indentations of the, the way the crinkliness of the petal is. That's the word, the crinkliness, the crinkly, that's it. That's the word. There we go. And then again, come round and take the small part as well if you want to. So I'm putting lots of crepiness in this because the outer petals are really quite kind of creppy. And then I'm going to go round the edge with my uh, ball tool again. Try not make it frilly down at the side. So just about halfway, maybe down, maybe a third of the way down. And then get in and make some nice little frilled edge on there. So see, you can do it with your ball tool alone if you want, or you can go back in with your dress, uh, your skewer and just put a little bit extra in, even if it's only in some bits that you want to do it. Okay. So you can do this with a silk veining tool as well, but the, the problem with the silk veining tool is that you'll get marks on it and there might be a different kind of veining. it stops the wire from protruding as much because if you do it in your hand often the wire just comes straight out the back okay so you see there I've only got a little bit where it's protruded so that prevents if I would tried to do that in my hand it probably would have completely popped through to create that U shape that's going to wrap around your poppy and then you can get some folded bits in here so get nice shapes into your you know crinkly bits whatever all right give it some nice shape and then just pop that to dry now i always dust my petals when they're dry it's up to you but um i prefer that so we're going to go to uh, another break now and i'll see you when we come back hi and welcome to today's tutorial i'm jeanette from jeanette reverse and cake craft and today we're going to make this beautiful vintage perfume bottle. So you'll be learning lots of things about carving a cake into shape, covering an awkward shape with sugar paste. I'll show you how to do all the beautiful decoration, how to make a little ball on the top. loads to learn, so let's get started. Hi again, so now we're going to go on and make the stamens for the poppy and also colour up the petals. So. Um, I've used some lily stamens for um, my centre of my poppy. So there's two different ones here actually. And so these ones are single ended, these are double. And you can also use these. I've used these in the pink one because I ran out. I'm going to show you what we're going to be creating. So we're going to dust up. First of all, we're going to do black and then we're going to pop over some purple on, on these ones for the red one. I found it easier with the stamens simply because they're really, really messy and I'm using some actual um, airbrush colour for mine because once this dries it doesn't come off whereas if you use a dust colour once it dries um, so you use rejuvenator and, and dust it with that or dust it straight on the dust still comes off and it's a bit messy. I prefer to use the, um, the airbrush colour. Remember if you're going to be um, using lots of dust to pop on a mask really important. So I'm going to start by cutting these stamens in half and I'm going to take a bunch of these and I'm going to take them onto a 30 gauge wire. So I'm using 
um, half width uh, green floristry tape, it's a, it's a mid green colour and I'm using um, a green wire just so I can see it but you can use any colour wire you want. So put the wire up, quite far up onto your um, stamens so that you can see the wire here and then we're going to hold these all together and about a quarter of the way down just pop on your tape, wrap it round to catch it, make sure it's stuck. Then take your wire and fold it back on itself over the top of the tape so that you have that like that. Then we're going to make sure that we take our tape and make sure it covers that wire. Just stops your wire from slipping out completely. And then tape down to the bottom of the stamens and onto the wire. Okay. So that's how you would create your stamens. So I've made lots of little bunches of these already and dusted some of them up. I'm just going to show you how to do one. So this is what I do. So I take some of my um, airbrush colour and I just brush it onto my stamens. Don't get it too wet because it'll start to dissolve. And it does dry quite quickly, but it takes a bit longer than the rejuvenator spirit does to dry. Okay, so I'm leaving the bottom white because I'm going to dust that up with some purpley colour in the bottom. Okay, let that one dry. Once they were dried, I would take the stamens and dust up with some of the purpley colour. So I'm using um, Orchid Purple by Fractal Colours. So and just into the, the base, tap, dab the colour in. And it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of white showing because there is, in the poppies, there's such a variation of colour and it doesn't really matter. And some of them don't have purple, some have sort of different pinky colours or whatever. And then just take some on the ends as well. So that's another thing for the centre. You can brush your centre with a little bit of purple as well because some of them are, are kind of purpley at the centre and some of them are kind of reddish at the centre and pinkish. So once you've got them all dusted up, we want to tape them round our centre, but we'll do that in the final stage. And I'm just going to pop some purple onto the centre as well and I'm just using the side of the brush. So we have our stamens and our centre. So the next stage we're going to go on to do is the poppy petals themselves. I'm going to dust in a box because I've got a lot of colour going on here. So I've got one already that's dry because I don't like dusting when it's still leathery because I always loosen up the wire at the bottom and, I, and then it really just wastes my petal. Now if you don't have poppy colour what you need to do is use red and a little bit of yellow, uh, yellow mixed in to make it kind of orangey because the poppy is actually orange, orangey kind of red and that is the colour there. This is actually called poppy red from Sugar Flare so um, you can see it's a lot more orangey than that one and even that one. So this one is Cherry Pie by Rainbow Dust and this one is um, Scarlet by Edible Art. What I'm going to show you to do is actually to do it on top of a piece of tin foil to give it a bit of support to the petal. So it allows you to hold the petal at the back and it also gives you some support on the petal itself because there's only that one wire there holding it in. Okay. So just dust on. This is solid colour that's going on here. So um, so you don't need to worry about um, putting too much on. But what I would say is don't just take it and plonk it on anyway. You want to be going in the direction of your veining. Otherwise, it will show up when you steam it. You'll have blotches of colour. So you want to be thinking about putting the colour on in a... a in a fashion where it's actually going on in the direction of how the petal veining goes. So you see I'm doing it in a fanning direction all the way down the petal from the outside edge. And the dust will just fall off the tin foil, which is great and it saves it going all over your hands. And if you're really, really messy like me, because I am so messy with dust, honestly, I like to leave most of my dusting to the end because if I start trying to dust in between, I just get in such a mess. So once you get it down from the top, you can come from the bottom up and into the middle. 
we're going to be putting a black kind of marking in here at this bit so don't worry too much about this section too much what we want to do is make sure we get plenty of color on the main petal so just tip it up get the dust off i have one of these little camera blower things here which just gets any excess dust off but be careful not to blow it into your dust or it'll go everywhere so tip that up over and do the back as well so again I'm coming in from the edge then what I'm actually going to do is go over with the slightly darker scarlet just to give it a bit of highlight here and there when I'm working with color I like to get shades in there okay um, so one color is just going to make it solid so we want to try and get more in you could even go over with even lighter colours in, in bits. So you might want to mix even that with a little bit of um, yellow just to give it a little bit of contrast on your petal. So I did the blue ones. I loved, I, I had that blue vase and I thought the blue ones um, would look stunning with the red and white. So I thought it would be really nice and I actually didn't have the vase beside me when I coloured up the colours for it and when I put them together I was like wow that's actually almost identical colour so the colours I used for the blue were um, cornflower blue and ultramarine so cornflower which was a sugar flare one ultra ultramarine by edible art and what other colour did I use in there? I started with a base colour of a pale blue paste as well. So I've left some of that so you can kind of see through bits of it as well. So that's what I did with that. So I've done that. I'm going to then take my um, darker red and I'm just going to get load my brush up with colour on there. Okay. Plenty of colour on there. And I'm just going to sweep that over in sections on here. Okay. Tap off any excess, be careful not to break your petal, you can blow it off with your blower. So I'm just coming in and I'm going to go on the back as well. Then I'm going to take the side of the brush and just really stroke it across just to help it to pick out any veins. Now you could put a little bit of um, purple in here just a tiny tiny touch to make that slightly darker red just to pick out some of that veining as well if you wanted but to be honest I'm quite happy with that red colour because that's what poppies are they're just a beautiful red with the white ones I've literally just coloured a piece white and I've added a bit of pink onto them in the part so that's my red done and I'm now going to go on and do my black now for this I am going to use some rejuvenator spirit and I'm actually going to pop it, some powder into the lid of the, the actual, this is a Roxane Rich Dust. So, and then what will happen is that will dry and I can pop that lid back on. So well, once the alcohol dissipates, I can just pop the lid back on and it's not a problem. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to pop some black on. And I'm just going in a sort of elongated ovally shape. And it's not going right down to the bottom, but it's going a fair bit down. And then I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm just gently going to brush it up through just to, just to create that smudged effect and kind of natural kind of flow of the colour that it would be on the poppy. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm going to take my my flat brush again on the back, dab off any excess colour and then I'm going to take it along the back to pick out the black veins on the back. So all I'm doing is doing this with the side of my brush and it's going to pick out these black veins that I need on the back. And I'm quite happy with that. Continue the rest of the petals in the same way and then um, 
that's it. So when we come back to our, in our final part, we'll be assembling the, the centre of the poppy and then popping the petals on and thickening the stem. So I'll see you in a minute. part of my sugar poppy and if you've just joined me my name is Anne-Marie McNamara of Ivory Tower Cakes based in Edinburgh in Scotland and um, I'm doing a season of petals and sugar on cake flakes and this is the second episode so if you'd like to join me for some more I'll be on every couple of weeks at the same time and you can view what I'm going to be doing next we're going to be finally putting this together and I've got my stamens which are already coloured up and I've uh, already taped. I have my centre which we've already done and I have five petals. Now as I say you can do four, anywhere between four to six petals in your poppy so just kind of you know um, change it around a bit. Have some with four, have some with five, have some with six, doesn't really matter and let's see they all grow differently and Actually, this is called the Papaver Poppy, and it's a, it's a really, really big poppy. And I actually have them in my garden, which is what inspired me to make them. I've got lots of these beautiful red ones in the garden. This is actually a real seed head here. Um, I've not got a flower to show you because they've gone past their best and they've all died off. <laughs> so I was hoping that I would get this done to show you a real one, but unfortunately not. going to start and pop the tape onto our um, centre of our flower. So I'm just stretching it out to release the glue. And then I'm just going to loosely pop that on a couple of turns and then push it up to the top so that it's nice and neat at the top there. Okay. And then I'm going to be holding it at a 45 degree angle and I'm keeping a bit of um, tension on there and just bring it down the wire. Remember to release the glue as you go down. So then I'm going to take my stamens and I'm going to put them around the poppy. Now I want them slightly higher than the, um, the centre itself. So I'm just going to tuck them in at the bottom like that. Just pop some in. Keeping the stamens all at the same height all the way around. So I'll attach four in to start with and then I'll attach some more. So you can put as many or as little as you want of these in. They do have quite a lot of stamens, that's the only thing. So the more the more you have, the better it will look. I'm only going to put eight little bunches in today, but i would probably put about ten in. It depends how thick your bunches are as well. So just pop them in round about and then we can spread them out a bit. You can stretch them out more, so just keep playing with them to get them out nicely all the way round. Okay, so as I say, I'd probably put another couple of bunches in there. So we're going to do our petals now. Now, with the petals, I always like to tape my wire before I put my petals on. For competition, they want to see all of your wires taped. But the other reason I like it is because actually when you pop it against the tape on there, it actually sticks and you can hold it in place. So it gives you a bit more, you know, especially if it's a big petal, it can flop about a bit. So I'm just going with the first one. So the smaller one, smaller petals on the inside. And I'll just go down and pop that one in and then put the opposite one in. So I don't know what it's like wherever you are in the world, but here it's pretty miserable today. It's very dull and rather wet which for Scotland is not that unusual. But actually, um, we've had some nice weather and it's been pretty warm actually on some days, which has been rather nice. So 
I hope you're getting better weather where you are. So that's our first uh, two petals on. I'm going to pop the third one in. So just, you know, see where they'll fit nicely. Okay, so that one sits quite nicely there. Now you see that cup shape there. Remember what I said about the U shape? If you don't do that U shape, you won't get them to fit in as nicely round about. So pay attention to that. What you can do is, um, you can, while they're still leathery soft, uh, you can pop them round the centre just to see, so that you can see if they're going to fit properly or not. And if they don't, then you can just manipulate them a little bit to make them fit better. So if you're worried about them all sitting in nicely at the bottom there, then that's what to do. Fourth one in now and see if I'm going to need five. But I really think for this I'm, I'm liking five. But we'll see. Let me have a look. Try this round. This, uh, yeah, see. So I think we could fit another one in here. You see? Okay. So remember, stretch, stretch your tape out. Get that in. So when I'm popping them in, I've actually got the wire at a right angle there, you see? So um, so it sits in nicely against the other petals at the side. Okay. Oops. This is the hardest part for me is the, the actual taping because I've got arthritis in my hands and honestly, it's quite tough so if you've got any problems with your hands and you find this hard don't leave the taping of all your flowers to the end let me just get this back down to where I want it so we can slot that third one in and look at that perfect that's just perfect so get that in and then we're going to thicken up the stem a little bit that's that first stage. Now what I'm going to do actually on here, because that's, that would be quite bendy and floppy, so I'm going to use a skewer to actually put up the back and that keeps it nice and solid. And in fact I'm going to move it right down a bit and bring it in about here so that we can bend that top over if we want to. So I like to use skewers for, for tall flowers that need a bit of strength in the stem because you can keep putting more and more and more wires in and they, you know, you can go on forever. And so I find that using a skewer is ideal. So what I've done is I've used the pointed end up against the stem at the top so that I can kind of blend it in. And then I'm just going to come down and actually roughly attach that. So I'm not worried about kind of covering up at the moment. All I want to do is make sure that that is attached. I'm going to use fill width um, tape now and go in and thicken that stem up a bit from the top down. So we need to make sure that the top, where the, the actual skewer comes in, that we disguise that. Okay. So just go back and forward with your tape at that point until you kind of thicken your stem up enough to blend it in. Okay, so I'm just going up and down, up and down. And take your tape right in at the base. Use your nail on your thumb just to push in up at the top as you go around with your tape. And twist your tape back on itself if necessary. And then bring it round and back down so that you can keep that neat at the bottom. Okay. So going up one way and down the other with the tape helps to blend in that bandage effect on your tape. And you can also then rub it with a blunt instrument of some kind, like the side of your scissors or your back of your paintbrush, anything like that, just to rub out all those kind of little lines. I'm just going to take a napkin and I'm just going to fold it over several times. Okay. And I'm just going to cut the corner off like that, pop it up against our poppy like that, and then hold it tight as you bring that down the stem. Okay. Try and not get ridges in it. I know sometimes it's difficult, but the thicker bits of paper you use, the more ridges you'll get. So if you want it nice and smooth, do thinner layers and more of them. 
okay so half of what I put on there you get it nice and smooth so I'm just holding that and I'm going to take it and again what I was saying about binding the skewer to the stem you need to bind your paper first just to make sure it's not going anywhere which mine is so you see that so that locks it in now you need to actually because this is short I'm just going to cut a bit away you need to have a bit of bare wire at the end just to secure the tape onto so that it's got something so make sure that's pushed up round it goes and then once you secure the bottom it's not going to come down it's really important you have it onto that fair bit of wire at the bottom otherwise the whole thing will just slip down You can take um, anything down and just rub the stem to get the lines out. And you can also dust to blend in. So there we have our, our, our head and our poppy. So here we have our finished flower and our seed head, which I'll pop in here somewhere and as you can see these are the ones that i made earlier so i've got some white ones with pink some blue ones with pink and some they've got some dark purpley color in the inside as well so if you liked um this video please like and share and um hopefully i'll see you back here in two weeks time for my next episode uh, of petals and sugar on cake flakes and i wonder what i'll be making then you'll just have to wait and see so I look forward to seeing you then and thank you to David and Paul for giving me the opportunity and I'll say bye bye from Scotland. <laughs>